I'm going to preview for some of you guys, uh, for all of you, really, uh, what I plan to kind of present at um, the Tableau Conference next week, a decision science approach to operational efficiency. And really what that means is that how do you really enable the decision-making process? Um, and I'm going to sh show you guys a little bit of how we uh, have used Tableau to enable that decision-making process for us at Cox. Um, I've been with Cox for about, um, since about 2009. And during that time, I've been supporting the field operations group. And so for those of you who may not know who Cox is, Cox is, is the third largest uh, cable company in the U.S. behind uh, Time Warner and Comcast. And so uh, for us, what we really try to say we're in the business of is providing life's most valuable connections. So whether that is uh, connecting those to the community through their local television channel or connecting loved ones across the world through video conferencing or connecting doctors and patients through their new smart devices, that's what we are in the business of providing. Uh, and we have, uh, we're in all major markets across the country, from East Coast to West Coast, North to South. And so uh, that's who Cox is. And so when we talk about enabling the decision-making process, um, I like to think of Tableau as decisioning, not dashboarding. Meaning anybody can kind of create charts and put a couple of metrics on the screen and make it look pretty. But how do you really enable the decision-making process of the, those that are utilizing um, some of the great work and all of the time and effort you put into it, that they are utilizing it to really make some business decisions, to really get some value out of what you're doing and, and move the meeting. So when you think about this, um, yeah, you just have to imagine uh, how the user is going to really utilize what you're doing. And, and really put yourself in their shoes. It does come with, um, I like to say that uh, for my team, I, I direct the analytics team, but I do not call us an analytics team. I really call us a business insights team. Because, and that really kind of shifts the mindset. It shifts the mindset into us understanding that we are here to really enable the business to understand what drives the business where the risk and opportunities are, and really make some real values as it, as it relates to how the business is run. So you have to put yourself in that shoes and not just approach it from, I'm just an analyst, but really I am a person that is here to understand the business and help those really understand more about the business that they had that they would not know before uh, had they not utilized some of the tools that we create. And so in providing this, uh, what we want to do is really think about the leaders and think about what information that they need and think about when they need that information. Because what you want to do is be able to, if they're going to make decisions off your information or off of your data or your analysis, they need to have that analysis at their fingertips the moment they need, that they need to make that decision. Um, it, 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 it does them no good if they ask you a question or they are inquisitive about something and it takes you six weeks to pull the data, put the analysis together, and then come back and present it. Well, the moment is gone for them in a lot of times. And for me and my business, we have to make decisions in a split second because of what we do. Um, sometimes the opportunity to make a difference um, changes if we are not equipped with the right information um, within minutes of having to make a decision. And so that opportunity is gone. Um, the other thing that you want to kind of do is be uh, anticipate, understand where things are might be going so that you can predict and provide those users the information they need to make the decisions for tomorrow. Um, hindsight is always 2020, but hindsight does you no good if, if the moment is gone and you can't do anything about it and tomorrow is, is a different dynamic. Um, and the other thing we want to do is, is really span the leadership uh, uh, spectrum. Uh, I like to be able to provide things that not only speak to an executive, 
but also speak to those on the front line that are really pushing the buttons and, and making those day-to-day -day decisions that really impact the business. So um, really a multi-level, uh, what I would call a multi-level approach to providing insights is uh, another way that we think about enabling the decision-making process. Um, and again, you want to be able to build something that not only is, uh, enables that decision-making process, but monitors uh, how successful you are and, and based upon the decisions you've made. So the reason why we're here is because we feel like uh, we have found out that Tableau is a great way to kind of illustrate that data or those insights behind the scenes. So when we talk about the components of enablement, again, it comes back to these kind of these three pillars that I, I, I mentioned previously. Uh, how do you make sure that you're providing value across multiple layers of leadership so that an executive can get as much insights from it as a mid-level manager and that mid-level and all the way down to your front line? Um, anticipate the user, uh, really understanding the business to the point you can say, okay, what, what is the next question that they may ask once they see what I provide? And so that I can always be pushing them down the road and not, and not have them kind of stop in their tracks in their dis discovery or decision-making process. Um, and all of these, and then gearing everything that you do towards, like I said, making, helping them make those decisions. So um, providing high level guidance around um, what you may see as insights and giving them the ability to dig down deeper until they get to the point where they are really on track to make a great decision. And so we accomplished this a, a couple of ways, uh, a couple of high level concepts that we try to utilize to accomplish all of this. And we really break this down into, I would call uh, in, at a high level, really three major kind of views as you will as we are creating things. So one is that the dashboards. This gives a high level um, uh, context for uh, whatever you're presenting so that the executives can come in and say, hey, how am I, what am I looking at? What, what, what is the state of the business? Um, opportunity dashboards that are really highlight areas to focus on um, and promote uh, a successful investigation so that that uh, once you see a high level, you understand. Okay, where do I need to, where do I need to start to focus if I really want to move the meter and look for additional opportunities or risks? And then um, what we call analytical kind of views that are really focused a lot at the front line or the front line decision making process, wherever that front line process is. So how do you get those guys that are down in the weeds that are really day to day? making those operational decisions. How can you also get them the things that they need that would really uh, move the needle for them? And so um, I kind of quickly went through that because the rest of the time I'm going to kind of spend a little time going through a live demonstration of, uh, of a tool that we use uh, at Cox uh, and our operations group that really helps us with our um, transaction reduction efforts and um, and that is centered around repeats. So all of you guys, um, I'm assuming that most of you guys have some cable service provider. Um, and if you've ever had those products installed at your home or if you've ever had an issue where you've had to have a technician come out, um, that is the field operations group that comes out that houses the technicians that install your equipment or troubleshoot the issues that you have. Um, and so when we do that, we obviously want to do that job right the first time. And if we have to come back to you, uh, that is a bad customer experience for you. And it's also uh, a, a waste of money for us. And so we really need to have a handle on making sure that we understand what are our repeat rates, which is how often do we have to go back to a customer to resolve that issue um, and really put that on a 30-day 30, 30 timeline. So if we go back to a customer within 30 days, we call that a repeat. Um, so uh, this is one of the tools that we kind of use incorporating all of the things that I just spoke about. Uh, 
to really help us with that review. So this is the executive overview. And it really is, like I said, geared towards, um, if you hope you guys can see it, but it really give, is geared towards um, giving a high level overview of where things stay, what, are the, what is the state of business. Um, and if you look on the page, one of the things you may or may not see is you may not see a lot of drop down filters. Um, this is by design. Uh, what we found is that when we load up the page with a lot of drop down filters, it is easy for those to use it like that. But what we found is that it really disconnects them from the discovery making process. Um, and it really, so when we take away the filters, um, the drop down filters, and we really create an interactive um, tool, it, uh, it really uh, helps facilitate that discovery process, really connects them with what they're seeing on the screen, and really helps them learn a, a lot about what they're doing and keep them, like I said, really connected to the discovery process here. Um, and so, while there are no drop down filters on the screen, um, you can get to everything that you need to get to on this one view, and, and there's really a lot more than meets the eye when you look at this. So this is the repeat rate, um, and it's on a rolling 13-month basis, and you can kind of see that from September to September. Um, and so it's saying right now, over the last, you know, over this 13-month, we have been at a 10%. Um, now I, I give a quick indication of where are we above, where are we as it relates to our targets by the up down arrow. Um, and you can see what the trend line is doing over the, over the last few months and then over the last couple of weeks. And even at the bottom, what we try to do is not just put data on the screen, we try to put some, um, some dynamic insights on the screen as well so that people are, are able to kind of really home in and, and, and find some insights really, really quickly without having to kind of do a lot of, of discovery on the screen. So right now I put an insights here that says our service calls uh, with a repeat rate of 12.7% contributed most of our overall repeat rate. So right then and there, uh, uh, you can see high level that if I wanted to focus on anything, I would, I would start to focus on my service calls as a major driver. For what is for what's country repeat rate, but let's just say that I wanted to. I don't really care about this 13 month average. I really wanted to look at the last three months. So, if all I have to do here is select one of the months, and it is going to filter the page to just the September. So now I'm looking at September. Um, I've got a view of September, and everything is in this, uh, in the in that uh, perspective. You can see that the dynamics have changed now. Um, it is giving you a different dynamic. Um, if, if service calls did not pop up as the major contributor, it would have changed to some other job. But let's just say, hey, I am not a, I'm not a um, enterprise level leader. I am a market leader in Central Region, so I don't really care what the enterprise is doing. I really care about what Central Region is doing. So I click Central Region, and now it is a now it is a page that is all about Central Region, and I can still see clearly where Central Region kind of ranks in the scope of all of my regions. I can see what's going on year to date with all of the markets within that region. So I still have a pretty high, I still have a, a, a pretty good overview just in the in that one perspective. If I only cared about Central Region, if I only cared about one market in Central Region. Again, I can dive into this one market and do the same thing. And as you noticed, uh, up at the top, those um, icons went from orange to, to uh, gray. So what that really is telling me is that they are on target. Uh, so I don't have to work, I don't have to visually, it is, uh, it is no longer highlighted, and so I am meeting my targets. So, and then over here on the right side, we've just got a quick, and everything is kind of for you, you guys' purposes. I've kind of sanitized a lot of this stuff. And so this is a high level of what groups of, of drivers, categories of drivers are really more responsible. So what it's saying is that um, within Central Region, Group 5 is 31% of, 
or the things in Group 5 of 31% of minor Greek communities in, in Central Greece. So, like I said, it, it, once you come onto the screen, it, it, it's a high level view, but quickly allows you to kind of really drill in to all of the things that, that you really would care about um, as a leader of that particular group, that particular market, or that particular region. So moving on to the next uh, next view, again, this is an opportunity review. So what this is really aimed to do is say, hey, give me a little bit more meat on the bones of where I may have risk or opportunity. Um, because repeat rates uh, are, we, we try to get a handle on those as quickly as possible. I've shrunk the, the time window from the 13 month rolling view in the first executive page down to a 12 week rolling view. So this is all about the last 12 weeks. Um, and so uh, we've already selected a region of California here. Um, and I can pick all of the sites in California to switch again to central region. I can switch to central region. And now uh, when I pick the sites, it will give me a drop down of the sites in central region. Um, now I brought a little bit more on the page where we've broken up our jobs into like four main categories. So now I can quickly see uh, the eight, overall 8.7% in Central Region, which jobs do uh, are really um, um, pulling me up or, or pulling me down. And so I can see that job number two is the one that's pulling me up. So if I wanted to see if I what opportunity I have there, I can click that, and now it is filtered for for job number two. And down here below. I now have a, a more detailed view. We've broken each one of those, one of the, each type of job in job category number two in a, into a more detailed job. So uh, the bar charts are telling me how many of those jobs we run on. Uh, the dots are giving me the repeat rate and the orange versus the, the gray is telling me it is above or below the overall average for that category. So below or below above or below the average of 11.8%. Um, so this allows me to quickly understand, okay, where do I need to concentrate my efforts on? If I wanted to, or where do I see a good performance where I may want to model that good, that good activity? Um, and, and, it's, and instead of concentrating, well, I can go down here to job, this, this detailed job number 26, and while it is a, a pretty big deal for me because it's at 18.2%, uh, there's really not a lot of volume there. So uh, it, it's something that I want to be aware of, but if I am trying to really move the meter to meet targets or what have you, I may not want to spend all of my time there. Uh, and, and, and so that's why we kind of I, I put those on the screen like that so the user can kind of see, okay, here's where I need to be looking if I want, if, where my greatest opportunity or my greatest risk are. Um, and, and over here on the right side is I've broken each job down, that job down into um, <coughs> uh, the resolution categories. And so let's just say that for whatever reason I really cared about this job right here, detailed job 27, uh, number seven. So I click that and so I'm looking at this job for central region and what it is telling me here is based upon the resolutions that we have for the re or the reason why we go back on those repeats. Each one of these dots represents a site in Central Region, and the bar chart represents the, the enterprise average for, um, uh, for that resolution. So the ones that are orange are the ones that are above the enterprise average, the ones that are kind of grayed out are the ones that are below the enterprise average. So now I can quickly see, okay, well, why is it I've definitely got some opportunity here in site number two in, in Central Region because they are way above the enterprise average. Something is going on there. Or I, if, if I come down here, I can say, okay, well, what are we doing so well that I can take back to the rest of the, of the enterprises and kind of model that best, uh, what we call um, uh, best practices to really help all of those other regions kind of perform where we are. And so now you can kind of see where you utilize this to really see where your opportunity, where your risks are, and we just put all of that power in the hand of the user 
in kind of very visual, visual, visual way um, that really promotes a lot of discovery. Um, again, I've, I've put a drop down here, so if I really wanted to focus on the, the very top, and, and in this case, it's going to be only one job, but let's just say I wanted to focus on the, on the very top volume jobs, we put a filter here so that you can concentrate on just the ones that are have a lot of volume if you want to move the needle from a volume perspective and not a real perspective. All right, um, and now moving on to a deeper dive is the uh, what we, is the a, a detailed analysis view uh, for for us in the field operations group. Uh, for repeat, you can repeat for a various number of things. It can be because the CPE was bad and we had to go back out there and fix the CPE. It could be that the customer, uh, the customer education issue, maybe we were out there to install something and the customer really didn't understand the products and services, so we had to come back. Or maybe it was because of a network issue. Uh, there was an outage in the network and, and or someone pushed the firmware or a technology issue and we had to come back and resolve that. Um, so we, I, I broke this up into things that are within the control span of the field operations group and things that are not. Because if on the, on the front line basis, if you're gonna be chasing performance, you don't wanna be chasing those things that you can't control. I can't control CPE going bad. I can't control uh, someone, something in the network happening. Or I can't control whether a provisioning pla platform on the back office um, uh, went went haywire. What I want to know is on a day-to-day -day basis on the front line, what are the things that I need to be concerned about so I can cut the noise out and control those things. So that is what this detailed analysis page is for. It's really for those on the front line to that are making decisions at the front line to really utilize this tool um, and get the value out of it. So I want to cut the noise and I want to only present to them the things that they can control on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's what this page is set up to do. Again, um, some of the filters that you've chosen before, really trend, uh, they carry over, so I'm still on the front uh, on Central Region. Um, but what I've done here is I've allowed the, those frontline leadership to put in what their leadership level is. So I can put, if you're a regional VP, you can put that if you're a site. Director, you can put that. Whatever your leadership level that you really care about, I allow you to se select that. Um, I've selected manager, and then I select you as the manager. And so, let's just say um, this it is art that is um, that is really uh, aware. Let me see what did I do here. Yeah, right. that's absolutely. So let's just go. Uh, let's go to eighty percent. Let's go back to art. in-house, just so I can clear it and, and get nothing but in-house folks. And let's now choose, hopefully, that, that's not working. All right. So now to clear this up, I'm glad I'm doing this. I know this should work. All right. So, so I picked the site and and it's going to give me the choose all here. It is going to give me the directors. It, so if you pick if you pick someone and you pick a site, so that I, I pick site. Now it's going to give me what site do you really care about? And I, since I've chosen California, it's really giving me the sites and the directors in California. So if you're if you're a director, it's going to give you or a site is going to give you your direct reports, which is the directors. If you pick the manager, it's going to give you your direct reports, which are supervisors. And, and if you're a supervisor, it's going to give you your direct reports, which are uh, which are technicians. 
So each one of those dots is going to represent a direct report. Just to kind of make so you don't have too many bubbles on the screen, let's just say that uh, I picked the manager level. So now I'm looking at all of the direct, all of the, all of the supervisors in California, and I can quickly see who are above or below the average in California. Um, and so it's supervisor number 29. And so if I wanted to click into him and figure out what's going on with that guy, it or now it says that here's their repeat rate over that over the 12 month period. Here are the jobs. Uh, Here's it broken down to a job of the things that they control, and again, the detailed job that they have. And so now I can really get a profile of who this guy is and where he has opportunities to get better and coach him up. Not only that, it specifically talks about where the issues, where the controllable issues break down for this guy. And so for this guy, it's saying that 26% of his are, of, of the majority of his issues are in out-of-spec issues um, or uh, or in RF inspect and they are, we're having to bring the outlet up to spec. For us, this is a preventative maintenance issue and the reason why we put this in the category is because if you're a technician and you were just at a job, well, when we send you out to a job, we mandate that you solve all of the issues on the page uh, at that customer's um, home. So even if we send you out there to resolve a data issue, you are supposed to leave that customer with no existing issues whatsoever. So if we have to come back for a video issue, we put that, we tag that against your performance. Even if we sent you out there to solve a data issue, your job is to make sure that when you go to a customer's home and you leave that customer premise, that there are no outstanding issues whatsoever that are, that are remaining for that customer. Even if it is a simple that it is a, a QC issue because if you see something that is outdated, may, maybe the customer is having working services, but you see that we're using outdated, a outdated um, cable or something like that, it is still your job to make sure that you leave that customer in pristine shape when you finish. And so it seems as though this, this supervisor or the technicians on his team are, are really over indexing in and QC related issues. Um, these out of spec issues are the things that are really related to technical issues where they did not leave that customer with the proper signal that they that customer would have needed to make sure that their services are working. Um, and down below, what we have is not, as we talk about enabling that decision making process on the front line is we put in down below the actual work orders that relate to that repeat. So we put the, per, the, the original job, the, the technician that, that, that did the, perform the job, the date that that job uh, was performed, the type of job it was, and then the, re, the actual repeat job that had to come behind uh, that technician to, uh, to further resolve the customer issue. What that subsequent um, technician found and what that technician did to resolve that issue. And then over here is a repeat interval. And what that really is, is that lets me know exactly how long did it take for us to have to, for that customer to register that issue to come back to that, uh, so we had to come back. So uh, what that means is in a repeat interval of one, remember I told you that the repeat horizon for us is a 30 day horizon. And so you have it, it uh, you will get a repeat if we have to go back to that customer within 30 days. Um, so this inter interval of one means that we had to come back within, it was within the first uh, 48 hours. If it had been zero, it would have been within the first 24 hours that that customer actually called in with an issue where we had to go resolve it. So now you have, you have a, a, a lot of context for those leaders that have conversations with their frontline technicians. They have a lot of context on what is causing the issue. And if, if it was a repeat interval of 30, well maybe that could have been something that was on the borderline of really not being in the span of control for that technician. But the, for the fact that it's one, zero, or anything in the first seven days, I would say, that is a high, it is highly likely that is, we are going back because that technician actually uh, did not do the job right the first time. So you can, so now you understand 
okay, I don't want to, maybe I don't want to talk about this one job that had a repeat number of 30. I want to concentrate on the jobs that have repeat elbows of zero to seven because those are the ones that are really the ones that I can say, hey, it, it's more than likely uh, uh, related to the job you did or didn't do as you, it comes to resolving those issues. Um, one of the things, and because we've kind of done a, a lot of analysis on this, and we want to speed up the, the, the time to market for this metric, um, if it's a repeat horizon of 30, what that really means is you don't know what the repeat rate is for any given period until 30 days after. Because it takes 30 days for a, what we call that, that repeat to cure. Um, but we don't want to have to wait 30 days to kind of, if you're talking about managing the field. So I do give the option to look at this on a seven day repeat horizon, which really shrinks the the horizon timeline. So now you can have those timely discussions where, um, and so you will see down here that all of these are now the repeat intervals. You can now see where those repeat intervals that fall into the 30, into the seven day um, span. But you can see also the repeat rate around the seven day. So I tell leaders that if you really want to move the meter, don't, don't, while we report on a standard 30 day framework, if you really want to move the meter, concentrate on getting your seven day repeat rates down. Because if you get that down, we understand that about 30 to 40% of our repeats happen in the first seven days. If you really move the meter there, you're probably going to take out a ton of, your, um, uh, a ton of, uh, of what is driving your overall metric. So we do give them that option to look at it in a seven day period. Like I said, that speeds up the time to delivery on this metric. So they're not waiting 30 days to have these conversations they can start having these conversations pretty quickly. And then finally, um, uh, another uh, new view that we've been putting together is kind of like an ad hoc analysis page. And what this really allows the user to do is kind of pick and choose what kind of ad hoc analysis views they want, they, they want to uh, uh, really juxtapose against the repeat rates here. So, um, Right now, I've, it's still on California, and I've chosen to give the, the user the ability to pick whatever granularity they want to pick. So pick a site, do they want to pick service call jobs, install jobs, do they want to, their granularity to be supervisors or technicians? And depending on the granularity they choose, that is what each one of these bubbles are going to represent. So since I've chosen the granularity of service call and jobs, each one of these jobs represents a service call activity. And let me change, uh, let me go back and change this to stuff all. Let's look at this at the top 50% just to kind of make this. Uh, you could do that. Let's just look at it, top 80%. All right. So these are the jobs that make up the top 80% of the service call jobs. And now I can see, um, based upon how these are colored, based upon how these are colored, the orange ones represent my opportunity performers, which are, <coughs> what this means is that they have, they, they have uh, above average repeat rates, so anything high is bad when it comes to repeat rates. And I've chosen, you can choose your secondary metric, you can choose a host of secondary metrics. So let's just put, um, it, you guys may be familiar with NPS, so let's just pick NPS. So what this says is they have uh, above average repeat rates and they have below average NPS. So now I can quickly zoom in on these jobs, these, these certain service call jobs, and to say which one of these jobs are really um, my bottom performers when it comes to these two metric groups repeat rate just opposed with NPS. So maybe I can say, hey, wh why, wh what is it about these jobs that are causing us to really perform poorly with this segment of jobs? And then on the flip side, the ones in blue are my opportunity performers, meaning they have the better repeat rates and they have the better NPS. So what are we doing well with these jobs that are allowing us to have the, this, this better performance? The ones in gray, they could have good repeat rates with bad NPS, or they could have 
good NPS with bad repeat rates. So they're kind of in the middle. Um, but if you wanted to quickly identify who are the top and the bottom as it relates to these two metrics, that color coordinator will, will allow you to kind of dive in. And so since, like I said, the granularity here is jobs, I can actually do at a supervisor level and say that now each one of these dots represents a supervisor in that in, in California. And I can do the same type of um, ad hoc analysis you will to really understand where do I move the meter, where do I have good and bad performance, and, 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 and where do we need to go to really um, uh, improve our performance. Again, just a level of context that we provide that allows uh, the user to, to really uh, understand um, what is driving the repeat rates. So um, switching over to install jobs, but it's saying the following in job, in install jobs are having the greatest impact, accounting for 47% of the overall repeat rate and 47% of repeat eligible jobs. And so you can really, now I can concentrate on this one job because this one job has is impact has a 15.8% impact on our repeat rate. So if I, if I if, if we're able to move the meter in that job, well, that's going to be a tide that lowers all the votes in this category. Again, if you're able to kind of contextualize, so um, if I select, if I just highlight this one job here, uh, it does seem like this one job is one of the top five jobs that are moving the meter, or uh, one of the top five contributors. So I, I so I'm able to see that. Or uh, another way would have been kind of to select a, a job over here in the list and you can see where they pop out. So it looks like this one is in the middle of the pack. Um, and I can see down here, just where, again, how many jobs this is so I can contextualize, is it a rate versus volume doing thing? Is it, are they having a big impact because we do a lot of it? Or are they having a big impact because they have very poor rates? So you're able to kind of do a rate versus volume um, analysis here to contextualize how you need to move the meter, what is causing this job to be one of the great contributors to your overall repeat rate. Um, so that really kind of brings me to a close on um, kind of giving you guys a demo of how we utilize Tableau to really enable the decision making process. Um, there it cocks around operational efficiency and, we do, and how we do that in the context of repeat rates. Um, and so that's really all I have. Since we've been kind of utilizing this, we've seen um, we've seen our repeat rates kind of fall about two percent. So if you talk about uh, two percent on about um, roughly three million truck rolls, that's a pretty big that's a pretty big um, improvement. Did you put a high value on what? About eighty eighty dollars a truck. So about eighty dollars. And it depends on if we do about in-house or contractors. Um, our in-house rates are higher than our contract rates are lower. Just curious if you've ever looked at the impact of weather. On Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, that's why we have it set up to look at it on a market-by-market -market basis. Um, because what is driving the, the, the controllables, at least from a field service standpoint, what is driving controllables in um, the Gulf Coast region is very different than what drives the controllables out in Arizona. So um, that's the word, reason why we kind of we allow it to be broken up like that because you're going to be dealing, dealing with different dynamics, um, weather, especially the time of year. We have uh, sites up in northeast region, so uh, in the in the winter, you can see how that's a pretty big dynamic versus the summers in Arizona. So NPS is a net promoter score, um, and the size of the bubble is how many jobs we run in that 
on, on how many repeat eligible jobs are in that category or in that grain. And so uh, uh, here you can see, hey, you got a high repeat rate in this one bubble down here, um, this one bubble here, but you don't run a lot of jobs there, so I'll, I probably don't need to make that a point of emphasis. Sure. Repeat that again? Yeah, so I was talking about um, the vehicles and the different uh, equipment that field services use and when they have to go through repeats. Yeah. Is there any issue with respect to availability or churn, let's say, in the institution of that thing? Uh, so I want to make sure I maybe. Right. So it's yeah. they have an order, so they have a ticket, right? And they have to go ahead and go, let's say, for a week mm -hmm. for some reason. And so is there equipment available? Oh, okay, okay, all right. Um, so uh, another, some of the other analysis that we do is try to make sure that we have inventory on hand. So we, we, we try to make sure that we've stocked up our, our technicians to have the equipment that they may need on a given day, on a given basis on hand so that they don't have to run out of equipment because what we don't want to do is if you, if the customer has a certain HD DVR box they pay for this premium box. When we go back out there on a repeat, we want to make sure that the technician is stocked up reasonably that he, what's on his inventory is able to carry him through the various scenarios he may see in the day. So we, we use a lot of analytics to try to make sure that we have that resource, that, that inventory optimization just right. Um, and if we don't, um, we do have a mobile kind of workforce that if the technician gets into a spot where he just doesn't have the equipment that the customer has for whatever reason, that he's able to call a mobile um, kind of uh, a, a mobile supplier that will come around and meet him at this job and give him the particular equipment that he needs. Yeah, and did that answer your question? Yes, it did. I was okay. Uh, I don't know if this is common, but if there are multiple repeats, like if there have to be more than two visits? Like, do you, how do you handle that? So that is not handled in this dashboard. Um, we do have what we call, it, we call those um, ARDs. Um, and we do have a, a totally separate kind of dashboard that is set up all around that specific scenario. Um, because there could be a lot of things going on. And so we bring in a lot of more, uh, a, a lot more detailed data to try to understand um, it, where is the breakdown, is it because uh, 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 turnover in our care department is that because we keep having these network issues. So what you'll see in some of these other things that I'm not showing you is that we've kind of linked this uh, a lot of data together to understand what's going on in the network, what's going on uh, upstream in our care, uh, what's going on with our uh, provisioning platform. So when we see these chronic, what we call chronic customers, when we continue to go out there over and over again, um, they kind of get flagged to the top for various reasons. They get flagged to the top um, so that when we send the next technician out there, um, we're not just sending our ordinary technician. We're sending what we call a field tech a specialist, which is our highest level of technician, to go out there and, and we give them, uh, generally when we go to a customer's um, premise, we give them a certain amount of time to do the job just because uh, that's how you have to build your routes. But for these chronic customers, um, and when we're able to identify them, we give them a field tech specialist and we give them unlimited time to go out there and spend all day if they have to to understand what's going on. I might know the answer to this one, <laughs> <laughs> just for reasons you know. But I was curious, uh, for the benefit of the group, this is 2018 built this in, right? Yes. And did you see a benefit moving to, to hyper? Absolutely. So, gentleman here asked how much data it was on. Um, it's about 20 million lines of data, and the data set that is built on is about, uh, I would say, about 150 different columns in the data. So it's a huge data set. And before we went to 2018, uh, this would choke, <coughs> uh, to be honest with you. Um, and so when Hyper came, came along, it would, <coughs> Pretty much, uh, it, it was a godsend for us because 
now instead of the users coming in here and clicking and have to wait for this to kind of reload very long times and, and really disengaging the user. Since uh, we went to 2018, we were able to utilize Hyper as you can see, we're kind of speaking around here. And it's a pretty massive data set that this is sitting on top of. You said avoidable. So uh, within the repeat metric, um, I broke it down on this page for field service controllers. There are another group of what we call um, avoidables, and those are things that are maybe customer care related, network related, and the reason why we call those avoidables is because these are things that could that could have been resolved without us having to send a technician. So. Obviously, the technician can go out and teach the customer how to work their remote or can resolve a provisioning issue on the spot by calling it back, getting there and saying, okay, this is the provisioning issue. If you call the back office, then we do all of these things to kind of rectify it. But that's important because um, we hire our technicians to be SMEs and resolve RF-related issues. And so anything that we send them out there to do that is not resolving the RF issue, customer education, um, equipment, even though, you know, uh, us replacing equipment, they can't replace equipment, but we can just, just as, uh, if we know there's an equipment issue, we can just assume we drop ship that equipment and let the customer kind of plug that up themselves. We don't necessarily have to spend $80 to send a technician out there to do that, so it's not the best use of um, that resource. But we call those avoidable truckloads, and what we try to do is, um, what I'm not showing you here is we do have what we, what we call um, a boundary partners kind of um, view. And what that does is allows us to show our boundary partners where we're running on these repeats that are customer education issues. So we can go back to our customer care department and say, hey, what's going on? Why, uh, where are we having some disconnects where uh, the customer care agent wasn't able to solve it, resolve this customer care, uh, customer education issue over the phone. And we even drill down all the way down to the customer care agent level to understand um, here's the customer, here's the agent that actually took this phone call that translated into this avoidable truck loan. So we can provide that information all the way back to our boundary partners, not even there, but even network related issues. Um, we call them network related issues. So if you've got an outage and we send a in-home technician out there, that is an avoidable truck roll because that in-home technician can't resolve a network outage. All he can do is get there and say, we this is a network outage. Let me refer this over to our outside plant technician so that they, they can um, control it or they can go resolve it. So that's a wasted transaction for us. What we want to do is we want to be able to identify that on the front end, not send the in-home technician, but send the network technician the first time so that we speed up the resolution for the customer that provides a better customer experience and it, is, it, it reduces a transaction for us or cost for us to the business. Any other questions? Um, we have, we, we spent a lot of time doing that. We, we use all tricks to kind of do um, do a lot of that. Um, we spent uh, we spent a good deal of amount of time um, creating this what what I call this analytic um, um, asset on the back end that it, that really is the data that this sits on. So while this gives me repeats, this gives me a ton of um, I, I have the same data set. It gives me a ton of other things. Um, you saw some of it like NPS. So I'm able to even take, uh, I have another dashboard that we built that is totally about NPS that allows us to figure out where where we have some issues to get, I mean, some opportunities to get better with our customer experience. And so it took a lot of time, uh, we spent the bulk of our time just making sure that we got the data right. And the reason why we did that is because when we're trying to answer questions on the fly, one of the things I don't want to do is I don't want to pull an analyst out of uh, out of doing his job to go 
pull data together and do all of these things. So we really spent a lot of time brainstorming, okay, what kind of data asset can we put together that is going to allow us to answer about 80, 85% of any question on the fly in real time without us having to go and repool data. So we spent a lot of time engineering that data and doing all of the data validation and cleaning on the back end just so I can answer these questions on the fly on the front end. Can you elaborate this, this data asset? Is it just a single table sitting in the test somewhere? No, it is. It, it, well, there are multiple tables just kind of depending on um, for this, uh, which is, um, uh, well, the, the, trying to describe it. This is more about uh, the transactional view of our activity. So we, this is a transactional view uh, asset for us. We have others that look at it from a customer-centric view. And so we can bring all of these different tables together for well, this one, I didn't have to do a lot of blending, but let's just say I did have to do blending with this and, and network topology and customer at attributes. I could blend all those together. Um, fortunately, I didn't have to do that for this reason, uh, for, for what I'm showing you here. But we have multiple kind of just what, what we call ad data assets or analytical assets that we've already engineered and put together that are kind of stored in different places. They may be stored in AWS, they may be stored in, um, in on just a Tableau server, it could be stored in our Altered server, and it could be stored in our uh, Oracle environment, or, or Hadoop, or anything else. So um, they're kind of all over the board, just depending on what we need to utilize those things for, and um, what is the velocity or speed that we need to kind of ingest that data. And it's always an extract, though, for the For this, it is. So for anything that we're going to do on Tableau, so we may do something that is uh, more towards the data science, where we're trying to actually, where we're actually predicting what what jobs are going to spawn and repeat in real time. So um, while I'm showing you kind of what happened, uh, we do have we are utilizing the data that this sits on to actually do predictions in real time of hey technician. You, you just arrived at this job, and based upon your kind of profile, you have a hard time with this type of job, and it's usually been because of this issue that you have not done. So please pay attention to that this time, because it may help you in your performance. So those type of things that we are utilizing, all off of this data set, just kind of depends on, uh, this is more BI related, and then we got some more other things that are more predictive analytics and streaming analytics in real time that we need a lot of. But you're not tapping Tableau and you're this portion? Yes. Yeah. 